The video is basically going to be about how we do things, the equipment we use, the types of feeders, how we set the truck up, stuff like that. But because I know there's going to be some beginning beekeepers watching this, I want to spend just a minute on some other very basic feeders that you'll see in the bee catalogs and the bee uh, supply stores. Um, there's a lot of ways of feeding bees. Uh, when you get on YouTube and read some of these books, you'll get exposed to an array of methods, and many of them are very good. And just because I don't do them or I'm not going to talk about them doesn't mean they aren't legitimate. I'm just going to spend a few minutes on just the very basics and then how we do it. This is probably the simplest and most common feeder right here. It's called a Boardman feeder. It slides in the entrance of your colony on the landing board. This one has two steps on it, one for the 3 8 entrance and one for the 3 quarter, depending on what size entrance you use. This is metal and wood, which is the one I prefer. They also make them in plastic. Um, I don't know, I just, I just prefer these metal and wood ones. They seem more substantial to me. They're more stable on the landing board. Uh, they're just, there's more substance to them. Both come with a lid that already has some holes drilled in it. The lids that come with them have a lot of holes drilled in, in them. I'm not sure that's uh, the right approach. Uh, Anyway, I used these in the beginning when I first got started. I built my first 30-something uh, colonies with these kind of feeders, so they do work. One of the, there's two negatives to them, and one is that uh, in cold weather, the bees really don't get to the feed because they have to you know, break away from the cluster and uh, really, in some respect, exit the colony to get to the feed. So they don't work good in cold weather, but in warm weather, they work great. And then the other negative about them is um, when the sun comes up in the morning and the, sur and the sun hits the jar or even the daytime temperatures are exposed to the jar, the syrup and the air, actually basically the air in the jar will expand and, and it'll make the syrup drip down in here. If you, if you got a good strong colony, they'll keep the mess cleaned up, but if it's a weak colony or it's an excessive drip, it can leak out the cracks and other colonies in the yards will in the yard and, and yards around you will come and try to get to the syrup through the cracks. So just be aware that these can cause robbing under certain circumstances. And again, I do prefer the metal to the plastic. Another very basic feeder that uh, you'll see in some catalogs is a hive top feeder. This is one variety of it. Th this one is uh, uh, made by Man Lake. And I actually at one point had a lot of these feeders, but uh, the reason I got away from them is because I was traveling so much and this was just one more piece of equipment that I had to keep track of. The uh, bees come up through the bottom here and they enter uh, inside this screen and they can't actually get into the syrup. They're stuck inside this screen. And that's actually a good thing because if the bees get in the syrup cavity, you can get a lot of drowning bees. Uh, one of the drawbacks of these feeders is they have to, have to keep track of this screen and make sure there aren't any holes or cracks that the bees can enter the syrup cavity uh, from within the screen. Uh, the other problem with them is ants can get in them. You need to have a very flat lid so that other bees can't get in here. If other bees can get in here from the outside, it can cause quite a robbing frenzy and you'll end up with a lot of dead bees in there. They hold a lot of syrup. I think they hold two and a half or three gallons of syrup when the colony's level. And uh, I used them a lot. I liked them, but again, I just got rid of them because I was traveling so much. I didn't want to have that extra piece of equipment on the colony. Um, I got around to using these uh, division board feeders. This one's made, made from Man Lake also. They call it the cap and ladder. You'll see these in our videos a lot. They have several different sizes. This is the gallon and a half, which I prefer, and they have a one gallon. And then you can also get them for medium supers too. And in Feeding Bees Part 1, I talk about why I prefer the gallon and a half, so I'll have you look at that to uh, see why we like that. You'll also, you'll also see in our videos that we really like these buckets a lot. This is my favorite feeder right here is these two gallon buckets and the one gallons also. We have these in the colonies that travel, so uh, a colony that's out of town or out of state will always have a feeder in it and can always be fed. But because I'm not traveling very much these days, I'm starting to go back towards the bucket feeders mostly. 
Um, if you look at our video, uh, Feeding Bees Part 1, you'll see, well actually in this video too, I'm going to show how we put the hole in the lid uh, so you can invert the bucket over the hole. And I'll, and I'll also use these five pound honey jars or a quart jar in the hole in the lid and I'll show that a little later in the video. Anyway, that's the basic feeders that I would recommend using, and, uh, and now I'm going to spend the rest of the video talking about how we set our truck up and how we do things here. I'm often asked if I ever add anything to my sugar syrup, and the short answer is not if I can help it. Um, years ago, I used to put Honey Bee Healthy in every batch of sugar syrup because, well, I simply was being told that it was good for the bees. Well, maybe it is, I don't know, but honestly, I just never could see a difference. I think if your bees are healthy, uh, there's just no reason to use this stuff. That, that's my opinion. I know some people will take issue with that. I think if you're gonna use this stuff, I, I think Pro Health is probably a little better. Um, the ingredients in Honey Bee Healthy are sucrose, water, spearmint oil, lemongrass oil and lecithin, and ProHealth is basically the same thing, but they've added a little bit of thymol. I have several large commercial beekeeper friends that tell me that thymolated sugar syrup helps with brood issues like European fowl brood and some of the stuff that comes along when you have a heavy mite load. Um, I also know that both of these products will keep your sugar syrup from fermenting. It could be good for that. Now, one thing I do add occasionally, and I'm probably going to, I hesitate to say this because I'm probably going to get some grief over it in the comments, but I actually do add a little bit of bleach when I feel like the sugar syrup is not going to be used up right away. I know that sounds appalling to many, but please keep in mind that bleach dissipates very fast, and I think within a day, it, any detrimental effects that the bleach might have had on the bee gut have probably disappeared for the most part. I think Randy Oliver wrote an article about adding bleach to sugar syrup several years ago, and he was of the opinion that it wasn't such a bad thing. And, and to be fair, that was a few years ago. I'll try to find that article and see if I can quote him in this video. Hope he doesn't mind. It was a few years ago, and he might have a different, different opinion these days. He's a pretty open-minded guy, and he's always changing his mind if he runs across a better idea. We try to make sugar syrup only as we need it. We try not to make extra and have it sitting around very long because of the fermentation problem, especially in warm weather. If you have uh, sugar syrup that's not being used right away, you have to figure out how to deal with it and keep it from fermenting. One way of doing that is to keep it cool. Uh, this summer we made up a toad of sugar syrup and uh, immediately figured out that we weren't going to be able to use it right away. So I took it down to a commercial cooler that I rent space from in town here and put it in there for a couple weeks. And when we got it back out, it was in perfect shape and uh, it showed no signs of fermentation. I know in honey that the yeast won't ferment under 52 degrees Fahrenheit, so I would imagine sugar syrup is much the same way. I'd like to add one caution here. Lemongrass oil, which is in both of these products, is highly attractive to bees. It's actually used in some swarm lures. In a dearth, having lemongrass oil in your syrup can really cause robbing. I've seen yards go absolutely crazy if this stuff gets spilled around the yard when you're feeding. Of course, lemongrass oil is antimicrobial, as is thymol. 
They're also both touted as being good for nosema. I see that some beekeepers in the far north add these items to combat dysentery in colonies that aren't able to have frequent cleansing flights. We don't have that problem here though, thankfully. And again, I don't like adding anything to my syrup unless I think it's needed. Thymol, of course, is the active ingredient in the mite treatment apigard, which I expect to be utilizing more myself next year. In past years, when I used thymol for treating colonies that had a really heavy mite load, I noticed that the brood issues they were experiencing cleared up faster than when I was using something that was like a non-antimicrobial type treatment, such as apivar. Thymol would also be considered organic, like oxalic acid or formic acid. Of course, keep in mind, just because something's organic doesn't mean it can't be toxic or, or lethal. Next year, I'm, I'm probably going to play around with thymol to prevent fermentation in syrup. Uh, first, I want to learn a little bit more about it. Thymol is interesting stuff. I'm going to have a close look at it.